Welcome back guys. If you've clicked on today's video, then I assume you're interested in raising your credit score. Now, hold on before you question why you would listen to a 24 year old kid about credit. Let me just say in the past couple of years, I've personally managed to get my own score up from zero to an 805 with almost $40,000 in line of credit. So hopefully that brings some clarity. Now, for whatever reason, there seems to be this stipulation that in order for people to build your credit, you need to have loans or slowly pay off your card. And let me be the first to tell you that that couldn't be further from the truth as I have done none of that. What you need to do is actually smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. That would actually give you a boost. But in all seriousness, today I will be debunking the myths and clarifying the methods and rules that I used to get to an exceptional score without going into debt. And for those wondering why I don't have a perfect score, I just simply haven't had a credit card long enough as getting an 850 requires at least seven years of perfect payment history and I'm only 24, so it's impossible. In today's culture, it is extremely uncommon to know someone without a credit card. And on average, people have about three different credit card accounts. In quarter four of 2021, credit card users reached a total of 196 million. Among those users, there were 20.1 million new accounts, representing more than 60% annual growth from the year before and bringing the total number of credit card accounts to over 485 million. That's more than our country's population. What's scarier is of the 196 million people who have credit cards, Cards, over 34.8% have subprime credit scores. That means a score ranging between 580 and a 669. Now, scores like that will be the difference between getting a 30-year mortgage at 6% or at 7.5%, potentially saving you thousands of dollars on your mortgage. Now, you will also be looked at as a high risk to almost all lenders, and good luck trying to get a low interest rate. Now, unless you listen to Dave Ramsey, a credit score is actually quite beneficial for your financial health. I also wouldn't be able to rent an apartment in 2022 without a good credit score or any credit score for that matter. So there are definitely some good reasons to keep a credit card around, but it is extremely important to know how to use this flimsy plastic card because you can seriously impact the rest of your life for the good or for the bad, depending on the decisions you make. Now, before I discuss the methods I use to get me to an 805, I need to address the misinformation and rumors about your credit score. Now for starters, it is okay for you to check your own credit score. Doing this will not actually lower it. What will negatively affect your credit score and lower it is if other people look at it in the form of a hard pull or a hard inquiry. Soft pulls, as far as I know, are totally fine. But what usually triggers a hard inquiry is any sort of loan or new line of credit, like opening another credit card, taking a mortgage, or even an auto loan. Now, this means that a creditor has requested to look at your credit file to determine how much risk you pose as a borrower. These hard inquiries show up on your credit report and negatively affect affect your credit score, usually for a short period of time, and they don't really have much impact on the overall score if you do it responsibly. Now, another common credit myth that I've heard countless times from my friends is that carrying a balance on your card or carrying debt from some sort of loan instead of just paying it off will also boost your credit score. Now, believe it or not, carrying a credit balance does absolutely nothing for you besides making you pay more in interest. And paying off installment loans like uh, student loans is actually a positive instead of dragging them on. Yes, it will have an effect on your score short term, but it is so trivial. And I'll explain why that is later on in today's video. And if you don't believe me, according to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, CFPB, the rumor that debt helps your credit is the opposite of the truth. In fact, they write that paying off your credit cards in full every month is the best way to improve a credit score or maintain a good one. Although I can understand why some people might think this, since a credit score is literally a reflection of how well you can borrow credit. And if you pay everything off, then how can you continue to show them that you're good at borrowing. Now, the question makes sense. I totally understand and hear it out from the people that argue this. It's just they give the wrong answer. What actually contributes to your credit score can be broken down in five things. And the three most important are payment history, which accounts for 35% of your overall FICO score, credit utilization, or the amount of available credit you're using, which makes up 30%, applications for new credit accounts, which is just 10% of your score. And the last two are credit history, which 
is 15% and credit mix for 10%. Now, the problem I first ran into when I was trying to grow my credit score was actually getting a credit card in the first place. At 18, you have no credit, so credit card companies view you as an extremely high risk. Fortunately, though, after a little research, I was able to apply for a Discover It student card, specifically the Chrome one for students, and I was actually able to get approved. I was also offered secured cards from my credit bureau at the time, which is an option for some people starting off, but it does cost money up front, unlike getting a normal credit card. Now, in order to actually raise your credit score, you need to understand what each of the five factors are that contribute to a credit score and how to follow them correctly. Payment history makes up 35% of your credit score, and it represents how well you can pay off your debt. In order to keep your payment history high, you need to make sure that you are paying off your bills and credit cards in full and on time. This is more important than anything else I'm going to tell you in today's video, and that has to do with a credit score. I have paid off my bill every single month on time since I was 18 and never missed a bill. Missing payments or being late can dramatically lower your credit score. I personally set up my account to email me every time my statement is ready, and you can also change your due date, which I've done, to a day that best suits you, maybe a birthday, when you get other bills, or something like that. Now, I can't stress enough the importance of living below your means and spending less than you have. This way, you will never end up in a position where you can't pay off your credit card. Credit utilization comes next, and this one is a little more technical than payment history. Something that I've learned which most people fail to realize is the amount you spend on a credit card actually affects your credit score. Now, spending $300 a month on one person's credit card can dramatically reduce their credit score, but for someone else, it could actually get them to a perfect score. So how can that be? Because I know it sounds confusing, but once you get it and understand it, it's actually pretty easy. You see, your credit utilization rate, sometimes called your credit utilization ratio, is the amount of revolving credit you're currently using divided by the total amount of revolving credit that you have available. In other words, it's how much you currently owe divided by your credit limit. It is generally expressed as a percent, and the proper credit utilization experts say to you use is to stay below 30%. Now, the lower, the better too. I try to spend the least amount that I can. If I can walk away with 9% or 10%, more power to me. So remember what I said before, if you spend $300 a month on a card that has a credit limit of only $500, you're using 60% of that card, which is not good. And this alone could crush your score. Now, if you have a credit limit of $1,000 and spend 300, then you're only using 30%, which gives you a better score. And if that limit goes to 2000, then you're down to 15% and so on and so forth. But from my experience, this applies to each specific individual credit card you are using and I treat each one individually and I only use about one to maybe two cards at a time. I ha might have six, but I only use two of them or one of them. And you should also add up all your credit cards together and make sure together they are also below 30% as well. A trick I used to lower my credit utilization in the beginning was only putting a small amount on it at first when I had a small credit line, maybe $500. What I would do is just fill up my car and use it to pay for gas once a month. All my other expenses expenses stayed on my debit card or I paid cash. And after about six months, I would then apply for a credit limit increase and then I could slowly add more stuff or migrate more stuff from cash or debit onto the credit card. Now just be careful which credit cards you do this on as some cards will offer it and some others you have to ask for. Now I know if you ask any Chase card, they will wanna do a hard inquiry every time, which is totally not worth it and I do not recommend it. But a City card or a Discover card, you can ask every six months and you do not get any hard inquiries or hard pulls, so you'll be fine. You just fill in the uh, the income statement and your monthly rent, just like two boxes, and then that's pretty much it. And what I've noticed over the years when I do this, I usually write zero for my rent because I didn't have rent for most of the time during college, and my credit line increased more than when I filled in that I am renting, like what I'm currently doing now, and also writing that you make more money will also help in the process, and that should make sense. So make sure to check when the last time you applied for our limit increases and also make sure that the information is all up to date so you don't miss out on any opportunities. Now, also, if I ever got declined, which I definitely have, I would try again in six months and usually you just get a letter in the mail saying why you got declined and then I just try again. Now, sometimes when this happened, I would also apply for new credit cards with a higher limit. Keep in mind, I didn't do this often and I no longer do this now. What I did was at most two or three times every other year until I had about five or six cards and so that the card 
hard inquiries would fall off my credit score. No hard inquiries also go away after two years, and remember that six or more inquiries are seen as too many, so keep that in mind. I then built my score back up before I applied for anything else. You don't need a ton of cards, and I really try to stress that to raise your credit line. A few is more than plenty. What you can do after you get these cards is just apply for an increase on all of them every six months, which will not hurt your score. These are the two most important factors towards getting a high credit score. The other three categories are also important, but you don't have to stress as much. They're more passive than the first two that I mentioned. Which brings us to the next category, credit history. And this is just about how long you've had your accounts open for. In general, the longer your credit history, the better. And how long your accounts have been open determines your length of credit history, which typically makes up 15% of your score. Now they use the age of your oldest and newest credit accounts, as well as the average of all your credit accounts to determine this number, which is why I recommend only getting a few cards early on and never closing the credit cards once you have it. You also don't want to make it a habit of opening new credit cards every year. They're just not needed. Now the last two are new credit and credit mix, which are each 10%. New credit is what we've already talked about, and it's about how many hard inquiries have been applied to your account. And when you apply for a new credit card, inquiries remain on your credit report for two years. Keep that in mind. But your FICO score only considers inquiries from the last 12 months. So just make sure you keep this low. Your credit will take a hit short term, but will recover shortly after. Lastly, credit mix has to do with creditors wanting to know that you can responsibly manage a mix of credit types, specifically installment loans and revolving credit. Now, this ties into the myth we spoke about in the beginning of the episode as to why some people might think straggling along their loans is more beneficial for their credit score than just paying them off. I mean, student loans, auto loans, personal loans, whatever it is. People that reference this are most likely referencing this specific category, credit mix. It's also the smallest category for a FICO score. And honestly, it will only affect your score by no more than 5% since half is split with revolving credit and the other half installment loans. So by having credit cards, you will complete your revolving credit section. What that means is to actively take out loans and go into debt or avoid paying them off when you have the money available is just not the right way to go. It is true though that installment loans with a long history of on-time repayment does help build your credit score. And if you close that account by paying it off, the history goes away with it and potentially drops your credit score. But remember that section only makes up 5% of your credit score and can easily be rebuilt in other ways I explained. Personally, I have not had a single installment loan ever, only revolving credit, which has gotten my score from zero to an 805. So focus on the major factors that make up a card, not something that's 5%. When the time comes and you do, however, need to responsibly take out a loan or a mortgage, then you can build up your installment loans category. Otherwise, steer clear debt. There's no reason to get in it. But with that all being said, that will conclude today's video. Let me know what your opinions are in the comment section down below. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Peace.